Hey guys, so today I am going to be continuing to answer your questions. This one comes in from email, interestingly enough, and actually I have decided that I'm going to, at least for the foreseeable future, include my public email address down in the description below. So I've got like a um, a public inbox and uh, the it's... Um, you can actually find it on the channel page, but uh, if you uh, yeah, just want to fire me an email instead of using like a... I know there are a lot of people that actually watch these videos, for example, not on YouTube. So if you wanted to leave a comment, ask a question, email is also an avenue as well. Again, another federated social network, if you want to extend the definition in that direction. I know a lot of people don't really like email, but i got to say, I get on with it quite well. I really quite like email. It's asynchronous. It doesn't give too much of your information away. It doesn't like show you when you're logged in or even where you're logged in or anything like that. It just does the very simple thing that it, of what it needs to do. And it's a good example of if it had extra features, if it had bells and whistles, it probably wouldn't be as uh, widely adopted. Like, you know, if you knew that someone had read an email before you were applying to it or, or things like this. You know, the, the, the very transparent systems, for example, like on, on Twitter, when you can see people t as they're typing. And I've always felt... You know, like, the email's a little bit better. It, it, it allows you to take your time a little bit more... And um, and it's a bit more of a thoughtful communication medium. And um, actually, interestingly enough, I, of course, use Postio for those of you that follow uh, me on the channel for quite some time now. Postio, you do actually have to pay for it, which is a bit of a novelty in this day and age with email. It's a euro a month. But it's really good. And um, the spoil is nice. They all use completely open source uh, software. Very good in regards to security. Very good in regards to how they treat their workforce, how they, uh, you know, run their operations and that kind of thing as well. They use all renewable energy and all that kind of goodness. So, uh, yeah, I'll just, you know, give them a bit of a shield there. They're not a sponsor and I don't have any affiliate link or anything like that. But um, I've used them for well over a year now and I've got to say pretty darn happy with them and you can do all the stuff like you can even sync your calendars and your, it comes with a calendar which you can sync with on your phone as with your address book in fact my address book on Postio is synced with the contacts on my phone so um, when I add a phone number in my phone it then gets um, sent back up to my um, you know, it goes back up to my email, so uh, it's all nicely synced into my address book, which I can at any point I choose then export into a CSV file and just put into another um, email client or provider should I choose to migrate. So anyway, a bit of rambling about email today. Um, so there's that. I, I, I will include a few more social links down in the uh, in the description. Now, there's not really a reason as to why not. Sometimes I sort of hesitated because maybe I might want to stop using a particular platform and then I have to take out all the links and all that kind of stuff. But um, but I'll, I'll work with that, I guess. But uh, a few people have actually mentioned, uh, you know, uh, that they found me on Mastodon through a link in the description of a video rather than through a video I did on Mastodon. So um, uh, so I thought, well, you know, if people are looking in the description for links to, you know, social media profiles and such, then it's probably best that I put some down there. So how much of the video have we wasted so far? Let's crack on. So I've got a letter from, uh, from Andrew from Romania. I'm not going to read out the whole thing because... Uh, it's quite comprehensive, uh, but good old Andrew tells us that uh, he lays out his computer specifications, which is a pretty good machine. Uh, talks a little bit about his uh, educational life. 16-year-old um, student, so uh, looking to get into Linux, but is pretty confident in regards to computers as a whole. So, um, and in fact, I think, it even, well, actually, I'll read, the let, uh, I'll read some of the, the later part here. Um... Let's see, let's see. Okay, so. Uh, I use my PC for daily use, browsing, office, programming, and gaming, but occasionally I play... Uh, uh, yeah, okay, but occasionally. I play games whenever I feel the need when I want to relax, as you probably do. The school doesn't force me to use certain applications that are Windows exclusive, so there's another reason to switch to Linux. What do you think? What distro should I use? I've tried several distros. I even managed to install Arch for many times. Not bad. However, I am considering that I'm not that crazy about the customization, so um, so I shouldn't really bother about Arch, Gen 2, etc. Thank you. Uh, keep up the good work. Best wishes, Andrew. Excellent. Cool. Okay, so what kind of distribution is suitable for someone who is computer savvy, but doesn't necessarily find the appeal of the uber customization of a distribution like Arch or Gen 2 particularly uh, enticing? 
Now, I think there's, that is uh, representative of a significant number of people. That's why I decided uh, to choose Andrew's email here. And there's actually quite a lot of young people that watch this channel as well. I'm uh, thoroughly impressed with the number of, of uh, people in the teens that install Arch and, uh, and, and, and are enthusiastic about open source. It's uh, absolutely inspiring, quite frankly. So... Um, so great, yeah. Couldn't be more happy about that kind of thing. So yes, uh, well, I've got a list here of a few different distributions, and I'm going to talk a little bit about a few different distributions. It's certainly not a comprehensive list, and I am sure there will be plenty of comments in the comment section below of various other viewers of this video recommending their own distributions. Um, and if you are such a person, give the pros and cons, give a good old comprehensive description as to why um, a distribution that I have failed to mention um, would uh, suit Andrew here. Uh, just as well, if not better. I've only limited this down to um, a few because I want to hit a few cornerstones, but there are variations within this and all that kind of stuff as well. Now, just a few few no notes on Arch. I'm not very familiar with Gentoo, um, but with Arch, it is one of those distributions where you get very up-to-date software, and it is very good in regards to things like programming and, and what have you, but it is designed to be very customizable. It's designed for you to to almost almost uh, you know it's like a, it's 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 very tailored to to the end user's um, fit, but um, as outlined by the computer specifications, you've got a pretty good computer there, Andrew. So I don't think you need to really worry. You don't you know you've got the luxury, I guess, not to have to worry about customizing. But if you were on a very you know very slow computer, then maybe. Uh, Arch might be useful, but no, no. I, I think you're right. If you are not inter in, if you're not interested in customization, Arch probably is not the distribution for you. However, the first on my list is based on Arch. It's very similar to Arch, and it is called Antergos. I'm also in this section here of the video. I'm going to include Manjaro as another distribution that is also based on Arch. So these are two distributions, Antergos and Manjaro, because they are somewhat similar in how they work and the benefits that they have. Uh, I would say that Manjaro, from my point of view and from looking at their policies, is slightly more... Um, it, it, it's slightly more tested when they roll out the releases, but Antergos is a little bit more on the on the cutting edge of newer software. But they are all in, you know, both of those distributions are are in the same ballpark, um, and a lot of it is um, is some of the. I mean, they're both distributions that are reasonably easy to use that do a lot of the customization for you, but also have the same power as Arch straight out of the box. They also take. Um, they also are quite. Um, liberal i'm going to say with their their um third party codex what i mean by that is like so if you um want to play like uh, dvds mp3 or not so much mp3s nowadays but mp4s streaming on youtube streaming on twitch all that kind of stuff you require proprietary codex but distributions based on arch arch itself and turgos and manjaro they in it's very easy in that regard they're all uh, all of the um codecs that you need to view anything on the internet pretty much anything at all, are readily available in the repositories. You don't need to add in anything third party, add in anything new. It's very simple commands. And um, I would check out the relevant uh, manuals for each of those distributions. In fact, the Manjaro wiki is very, very, it's surprisingly good with documentation, especially it tends to be quite specific to Manjaro because what's not specific to Manjaro can just be looked up in the Arch wiki. But um, the Manjaro wiki is not too shabby. So uh, yeah, and uh, Antiogos, yeah, is also pretty good in, in that regard as well. Antiogos is is not lacking. Both Antiogos and Man Manjaro have very vibrant communities with very very helpful people uh, that, in my experience, uh, actually are are quite willing to um, deal with people who are new to their distribution as well. So they they're quite patient, uh, or they have been patient with me. So uh, so there's that. With Antiogos. Uh, you get to choose your desktop environment, so there is a degree of customization there. Uh, to pick one out of the box, Antergos seems to consider the GNOME desktop to be the default. It seems to be the one that's on the live CD, the one that's built for. Um, I also quite like the Cinnamon desktop in Antergos as well, but you get to choose. There's also the Mate desktop, XFCE. So yeah, there are a fair number of desktops. They give you a screenshot, so you get to choose. But uh, yes, Antergos Manjaro, very similar to Arch. Yeah, well, they're based on Arch, 
Um, but if you're looking for something like Arch, but with less of the customization aspect to it, but you still want that kind of power, you still want very new software. Uh, and if you are familiar with computers and you're confident enough that if something uh, not necessarily goes wrong, but if there's something that you need to learn how to do, that you can then seek out on either on the internet or the IRC or the forums or anything like that for solutions. And I'm sure you're capable of doing so. So, and, uh, and Teagos and Manjaro, uh, are my sort of first category of recommendations. And I will, of course, put links to both of those uh, distributions down in the description below, as with all distributions I'm talking about today. And also, in addendum to all of that, please check out the About page of all of these distributions because they often outline a very succinct philosophy or a philosophy that they like to follow. So um, that also might be something that applies to you. So there might be policies or, or, or philosophies regard, you know, that, that are more appealing to you in one distribution than others. OK, so the real power behind Antergos and Manjaro is that they run newer software, are updated regularly and have large software libraries. So there's a lot of software available for these distributions, which I think is going to help someone who is uh, eager to learn about Linux when you've got a lot of good Linux software at your disposal. So I think Antergos Manjaro is definitely... Worth a go on the live CD, if nothing else. Now, with Linux, uh, and I, I I, don't know if you already know this or if any, any of you are watching don't already know this, but I just want to go over um, that it's a really good idea that if you are looking to try out Linux for the first time to use what is called a live USB. And a live USB is when you download the uh, distribution itself from the website, you'll get a, a ISO file. And then you can um, effectively burn that ISO file, not to a CD, but to a USB using a um, well, a piece of software. An example of an open source piece of software that's cross-platform that can burn uh, US, uh, ISO files to USBs is Etcher, also available as an app image if you're using it on uh, Linux. So what you can do then is you can plug in this USB and uh, you can boot off of it um, by selecting it as a boot device in your system's boot menu. And then it will actually use that USB and it will boot off of that USB as if it was a hard drive. For that moment in time, it will pretend that the USB is a hard drive. Now, if you restart the computer and pull out the USB, your computer goes back to the state that it was before. However, you get to preview an operating system by running it off the USB that allows you to determine whether or not all your hardware is uh, detected correctly. And that's the most important use I find for it. But also software availability, whether or not it, it runs at all. Um, and uh, yeah, it gives you uh, an idea for the aesthetic, what themes might be available if you were into that kind of thing, or that was important. So yeah, live distributions, very, 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 very good. So onto our second category uh, is going to be um, Linux Mint. I've got a few written down here, and I don't know which order I'm going to do them in. Linux Mint. That is a category because Linux Mint has a very vibrant community, very willing to help uh, people through problems. And um, also, again, another community that I find to be quite patient with newcomers to Linux. Um, now, that being said, Linux Mint is a little bit different from Antergos and Manjaro in a few ways. First off, it's a little bit conservative in its um, software choices. So what I mean by that is Linux Mint will tend to, is based on Ubuntu in the same way that Antergos and Manjaro are based on Arch. But with uh, Linux Mint Cinnamon, you have uh, a much more older but better tested set of software in the repository. So the software might be a little, you know, a couple of versions behind, but it tends to be sta more stable. It tends to be lower maintenance. Uh, you tend to have fewer issues overall. You tend to, uh, you know, you don't you don't have to apply yourself so often um, in, in upgrade processes and, and, and version changes and that kind of thing, because when it comes to uh, Linux Mint, uh, you know, only like necessary upgrades are, are really done in a lot of ways. It gives you some decision over the upgrade process, but Linux Mint tends to be very reserved. And then it tends to have, uh, and every two years, it'll bring out a major release where there is a whole bunch of uh, new stuff. But you typically will upgrade Linux Mint once every two years when a major release comes out. You can upgrade every six months whenever they bring out a, uh, a point release. But um there's really not too much of a requirement for that. Just the latest version of um, Linux Mint tends to do quite well. And then whenever there's a big major point, uh, major version release, then just update when that's available or maybe even shortly after once, you know, some of the initial day zero bugs have been worked out. Um, 
But yeah, Linux Mint tends to be lower maintenance than Arch-based distributions at the cost of, of older software. So Linux Mint tends to be favored more for for newer people to Linux because there just tends to be fewer things to go wrong and they can learn a distrib uh, you know learn the distribution as it is and then maybe graduate to something a bit more cutting edge like Antergos or Arch. But Linux Mint is also used by a lot of um sort of veteran computer users who want a somewhat traditional experience more similar to maybe Windows 7. And uh, Linux Mint does tend to go for the more traditional uh, desktop layout and um, and all that kind of structures and menus and that kind of stuff. So if you're, if you're fond of Windows 7, then Linux Mint will be quite good. Now, um, if you are not a fan, or since you say you're not a fan of customizability, then I would recommend the Cinnamon version, which is generally considered to be their main version, their flagship version. And it's very polished, very clean, very sleek, very nice looking. But Cinnamon is slightly less customizable than the than the other version that they tend to go with, which is Mate. Mate is very similar to Linux Mint's um, Cinnamon, like a lot of the same software is included, the same themes are used. However, the Mate desktop rather than the Cinnamon desktop is much more customizable, um, and it can be uh, more lightweight as well. So if you want those kind of customizable options, then the Mate version is for you. However, uh, if you want something that you just want to install and go, Linux Mint Cinnamon is probably going to suit you uh, more than fine. It's a nice compositing um, desktop environment. Uh, so when it comes to also with software selection, because one of the things you noticed uh, or you listed that you use computers for is programming. And that's also had an effect on uh, the distributions that I've chosen for this list. Now, I don't know much about Mint in regards to how it's used as programming, but it is based on Ubuntu. And I know quite a few people that program um, in Ubuntu in a big way so and Ubuntu-based distributions in a big way. So since Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, then I am going to go out on a limb there and say that if you can program on Ubuntu, you'll probably be able to program uh, using the same tools uh, just as easily using... Um, Linux Mint. But if I am wrong, then please correct me down in the comment section below. So on to the penultimate selection, uh, or the penultimate, I suppose, group of distributions here, um, which is Ubuntu slash Ubuntu Mate slash one of the Ubuntu variants. So this is a little bit like Linux Mint. However, whereas Linux Mint have a major release every two years, Ubuntu have a release every six months with what's called a long-term support release every two years. So um, every six months, they can they update um, all of their software repositories. Linux Mint um, don't do that in the same way. So if you wanted newer software, then the six monthly releases of Ubuntu are quite good. Uh, in that regard, it's not quite as cutting edge as Antergos, but it's more cutting edge than a, a long-term support version of Ubuntu or Linux Mint. So uh, the sh the regular six monthly releases of Ubuntu are the happy middle ground between Antergos and long-term support releases. Now, I would off the bat say, why not give the normal main regular Ubuntu uh, distribution a shot? It's the most commonly used Linux distribution, if you don't count Android and Google Chrome. And uh, it is... Uh, most widely supported, I would expect. It probably has the largest community, the most number of people would be able to, to help you uh, with it. And it's certainly not, um, you know, because it is such a mainstream Linux distribution, at least within the Linux world, you'll probably be able to find the most amount of support there. Um, the, you know, almost any packages made for Linux are made for Ubuntu. Now, that to be said, that also means that they're likely to work on Mint, and Antergos and Manjaro have very large uh, software libraries in their own capacity, but also they have access to something called the AUR, which is a community community repository, which allows um, almost anyone just to 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 get their software in to the uh, into the Arch distribution. Now, with Ubuntu-based distributions and Linux Mint-based distributions and Antergos and Manjaro-based distributions, you have available to you snaps, flat packs and app images, which are three additional 
um, ways in which you can get software. Now, I won't necessarily cover them in this video because that is quite a big topic, but I have done videos talking about them before, and I will do videos talking about them again. But basically, the short story is that snaps, flat packs, and app images are package formats, ways to package a piece of software that is distribution agnostic, so it can work on um, well, any distribution, uh, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Antergos, Manjaro, Solus, um, and they're pretty good, actually. They're somewhat in a state of competition right now, and one might imagine that they're, a victor could arise. App Images kind of solve a slightly different project because they're portable applications, whereas Snaps and Flatpaks are a little bit more like installed applications. Uh, but then that's not to say that you couldn't uh, put together a package management tool for app images and have it so that app images are installed um so anyway there's uh, there's there's all all those kind of options there but because of those um more universal package formats you're probably likely to be less restricted than you were even a couple of years ago so uh and and also uh those package formats apply not only to ubuntu and the Ubuntu-based distributions, but also to Linux Mint and, uh, as well. So even though I say that Linux Mint's native uh, software repositories are a little bit on the uh, you know more um, mature side, shall we say, um, you can um, get around it. You can um, install newer versions of software by just using Snaps and uh, and flat packs as well. Uh, so yeah, with Ubuntu, because it's so widely supported, yeah, you can, you can argue that, um, it might be, you know, you're going into the most populated community if you were to use Ubuntu. However, there are a lot of people that watch this channel that vocally do not like Ubuntu and would chide me for recommending it without at least recommending some of the, um, variants that are, many would say, um, better. Um... But that is, of course, subjective. So my personal favourite out of the Ubuntu variants is Ubuntu Mate. And of course, again, links in the description. Ubuntu Mate is a little bit of a throwback to more traditional eras of computing. Uh, traditional eras of Windows, of Mac, of Linux. Like, I mean, really, it does have this traditionalist feel about it. And you can customise it quite a lot. So it might not necessarily be completely your bag of chips if you want to... Um, you know, if, if if you want to get away from customization, but in reality, the Mate desktop, if it's available, you know, wherever you get it, available on Antergos, Manjaro, Linux Mint, or Ubuntu, it is still quite a very easy to use desktop environment. So uh, although it is customizable, I don't expect you'll have problems with it. It's uh, and, and there are plenty of uh, you know, it's it's very easy to use, and there are plenty of people that use Mate that don't customize it. Uh, I use I Mate, and I don't customize it. So. Um, although that is actually a specific choice because I do a lot of reviews of distributions I tend to pref try and get used to a distribution's way of doing things rather than change a distribution to my way of doing things because um, you know whereas if I if I was a, a different type of computer user I would customize the computer to my needs but because I am uh, not <laughs> I change myself to to um to adapt to the computer to see uh how easy it is and to see if if you know to 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 see what the uh distribution or software is uh is trying to do and trying you know see because a lot of software just tries to uh, innovate a workflow and uh, if you just uh, dig in your heels and insist on doing everything your way all the time uh you might miss out on some new um New ways of doing things. And I'll tell you a good example of that is uh, threaded conversations in email. Um, there are people who I know um, offline who who use email. And uh, when the various email providers started bringing in the conversation style emails, they hated it. They hated it. They hated it. And they kept asking me, Chris, how do I get this, you know, turn turn it off, turn back to the old style of email. And uh and they still they swear by swear by it to this day. They hate the thread, but I I absolutely love the threaded email um, conversation. And it took a little bit of getting used to, but now uh, I'm quite uh, quite fond of it. But it was only because I had to sort of open myself up and be willing to change in, at a time when I didn't have to, when there was no obligation, and arguably even no um, no reason, cause or benefit to doing so. But it turns out there was. So, hooray! So there we go. Uh, 
I, the distributions I have recommended have been Antergos and Manjaro, based on Arch, if you want up-to-date, cutting-edge software, a lot of it, and... Um, yeah, it's it's pretty. Uh, you know, uh, some might call them more the, uh, the 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 sort of the performance vehicles of the Linux world. Then you've got Linux Mint Cinnamon, which is a popular distribution among advanced and newbies alike. It's got a very good software library because it is based on the latest long-term support of Ubuntu, and it's very easy to use. Also, following a more uh, traditional desktop metaphor, um, but it doesn't have too much in the way of customizability. There's a control panel with a few options, but you know, you're looking at something that resembles Windows 7 and uh, I'm quite fond of it too. And then there's Ubuntu, Ubuntu Mate. Lubuntu is pretty good if you want something lightweight or um, Kubuntu uh, if you want a KDE variant, which is also quite nice as well. So um, if you do like, um, but KDE and Kubuntu actually, um, uh, the KDE Plasma desktop environment is a very customizable desktop environment. It's quite easy to use, but there's a lot of custom, there's a lot of options there if you wish to use them. So if you don't want to do customization, if you don't really want to bother, then KDE probably is not the desktop for you, and something like Ubuntu and Ubuntu Mate um, might be more suitable. Again, Ubuntu Mate is somewhat customizable, but it is very very easy to use, and it's certainly nowhere near as customizable as KDE. KDE can you can customize everything, everything. Um, although for some reason I just feel that there's just a lack of good themes for the Plasma environment. And a part of me says that it's not actually because they don't exist, it's because they're difficult to find. Uh, it's because of that, that theme editor on KD, on Plasma. You're yeah, Not the theme editor, the theme selector in the control panel where you can download themes from uh, kdlook.org. So that's a horribly broken system. Anyway, and yeah, it gets it, re it completely... Um, I never get it to work. So... That's almost about it for the distributions that I might recommend to someone who's new to Linux, but might also be um, adept and confident with computers as a whole. Uh, but I would like to leave you with a, an unorthodox recommendation, but one which um, I'm going to make nevertheless, and that is to give Tails OS a look. Now, Tails is, a, is what's called an amnesic live distribution. So... Tails is a, a version of Linux. It is a distribution of Linux, but it is designed for a very specific purpose. And you'll find this with a lot of Linux distributions is that you do get Linux distributions that are general purpose for the desktop or for the server or what have you. But you'll also find that you get a lot of uh, Linux distributions, very specialized purposes for penetration testing or for um, uh, for protecting your anonymity. And Tails is a distribution specifically designed for protecting uh, your anonymity. So for, you know, activ activists and journos and uh, foreign agents and spies and all that kind of stuff. But uh, the idea behind Tails is that you install it onto a USB in a very similar way to how I described earlier, and you boot off of it. But this Linux distribution is designed only to be run off of a USB. So um, if you want to have a look at an applied Linux you know, in a special application, Linux in a special application, then I think this could be a very educational experience. And if you're uh, comfortable with using a virtual machine, then, uh, then, then try that as well. Uh, now, with Tails OS, you don't get a high-performance Linux distribution. So, for example, you're using the Tor browser and you're using the, you know, the privacy tools. So don't treat it as a like-for-like uh, -like comparison of an actual Linux desktop, but as an example of something that you can do with Linux, that you can take a distribution and you can specialize it and uh, then you can deploy it in all kinds of uh, interesting ways so yeah just like you know i think it's worth just uh, if you um if you want a sort of taste of linux but um but but not necessarily of the distro uh, the the sort of the all purpose uh, desktop distros there are actually you know linux is a very very good at um developing specialized or linux is very good as in, in like the linux community and the linux world tends to be very good at um Special, making specialized distributions, taking open source software and, and applying it in, you know, sort of rather novel ways. You could never do that with proprietary software. It would cost you a fortune in license fees. So there we go. Um, but yeah, just, uh, just a bit of an idle thought, just a bit of an educational experiment. But Tails OS, yeah, it's a, it's an example of a, and it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty well to do distribution. It, it runs pretty nicely, but, um, 
but yeah, if you want to look at uh, Linux in a slightly different environment for a slightly different purpose than just on the desktop, then Tails OS is uh, is good for our rummage. So I think that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out all the lovely links down in the description below. Um, and of course, I look forward to all of your thoughts down in the comments section. But until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.